Welcome back to Crazy Dave's Crew. I'm Laura and you're watching Thursday Threads. We're going to keep rolling a little bit with that whole canning jar. We're going to change it up just a little bit and make it into an ornament. So don't go away. We'll be right back. So there's one example. And this time I just used some of the same fabric I used for my canning jar. I'm starting out with a five and a half inch block. You could make it five inches if you wanted to, and then just, you know, adjust your other pieces. And by doing five inches, you could do a, a uh, charm pack. I know on eBay there's some people that do five and a half inch squares if you want to go that route. Or just take your scraps and cut down some pieces. But there's one. There's another one. Is that fabric not adorable? Got that at Joann's. They were having a very nice sale, and uh, that was one I was like, eh, I've been a good girl. But I didn't like how, by doing it small, so that's why I went a little bit bigger. I just think that looks better, in my opinion. So, love that fabric, but I didn't like how the way I did my hanger. So we're going to go with this one. So we're just going to start out with some five and a half inch squares. In looking around the internet, I found some people who do something very similar, but they will actually make stripes or patchwork and then they cut it to the piece they want, so you could do that too. I thought that was interesting and cute, but I'm playing it totally straight, not trying to get too fancy or too creative. So we're just going to play it the straight and easy way, and we'll work on getting a little wild and crazy at a later time, when we're all a little bit less rushed and stressed. And So let's work on this one. So if you have watched a previous video, about making canning jars, then all of this is going to be very, very familiar. If you haven't watched it, I do recommend you go back and watch it. As I'm going to explain how all these pieces are put together. I'm not going to show you everything today. I'm just going to kind of talk you through it. So I need my five and a half inch block, and then I need Some one and a half by one and a half inch squares. And we're going to sew these down from corner to corner. Okay. So that they look like this. And for those of you who know me, I hope you're sitting down, I didn't pin these. Wild and crazy, huh? Alright, so again, we're starting out with a five and a half inch block. We have sewn down one and a half by one and a half inch blocks. And I have my quarter inch line right there, right on my seam. Take it off of safety. I'm going to do that to all four corners. And I'm going to press it down. Okay, and that's my background. That's my ornament. So I'm going to do that on all four corners. And then I'm going to press all four corners open. Okay, let's do that real quick. So we've got that open. 
I have this really pretty gold that I found in my stash. So I'm going to use that and I'm going to use my background. And I'm just going to sew them together like that. So what I have is one and a half by two and a half. And then just for simplicity's sake, I've got one and a half by two and a half of my background. And that's going to make it a little bit too big, but I'm okay with that. So I said I would much rather have it be too big than too little. Too big, you can snip off. Too little, you can't. I think two and a quarter is probably more accurate for these, but again, that's okay. All right. Like I said, they're you know, about a quarter of an inch too big. So, one and two and a half, one and a half by two and a half. And let's make these one and a half by two and a quarter. And then you're just going to sew that down, getting it as centered as you can. And you're going to sew that down. So here's what I've already done. Like you can see, I've got almost a half inch overlap, and that's okay. But I tried to get it centered. Now I'm going to cut a piece of my background to go across the top and then along the side. To go across the top, it's a one and a half inch. by, bet you guys know that, because this is a five and a half inch square, so it's going to be one and a half by five and a half. Well, I am going to go ahead and trim this off. And to make sure I'm getting it nice and straight, I'm going to use my ruler, and I'm going to pop it right onto that line on that seam, so everything's nice and straight. I do like having a nice straight line to sew on. So I'm going to sew that to there. We'll be right back. So far so good. Now I'm going to put a strip along this side to just kind of finish the block and then I'll start putting them together. So we're going to make a one and a half inch strip to fit. And that will be about seven and a half inches. Okay. And then we're going to sew that on. Just as easy as the canning jar block. Five and a half inches across, seven and a half inches down. So that is pretty cool. And again, I would recommend making things a little bit too big. You can always trim it down. You can't add more to it. There we go. And then I would just put them together. Like so. I think the best thing about Christmas is that you can get gaudy and crazy and it still always looks beautiful. I chose to do a... Uh, green swirly as my background. You could do any color you wanted to. Don't think I'd recommend, you know, like a like this one because I think that would make it way too busy. So there you go. Basically it's my canning jar with a different sized just a little bit different sized lid. Instead of a lid, we've got a little the little ball hanging. I hope that this has been informative. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I'll tell you, I have really gained an appreciation for the people who make up patterns and give you those exact dimensions 
it's not easy. It, it's a little difficult. But it's so much fun when you get done and you've, and you've been able to figure it out and it all matches up. So very appreciative of the time and effort that people go through to make up their patterns. Because that's the beauty of quilting. You could do just about anything. You just got to get the, the, the math right. You got to get your pieces to line up correctly. And sometimes I think that's the part that scares us is that there's so many options we don't know what to do. But have fun with it. Try it with, with doing a stripe down the middle or maybe up and down or sideways. Try making it a patchwork and then just, you know, cut off the corners. There's there so many options that you can do. But go have fun with it. Send us pictures on Facebook at Sewing and Crocheting for Beginners. Send us pictures on Facebook at Crazy Dave's Crew. And look for us on the internet at cdcrew.com. I'd love to see your pictures. Would love to hear from you. Find out what you're working on. And I will see you right here next time. Thursday Threads on Crazy Dave's Crew. Thank you so much for watching.